Hey everybody, Jazzy here. Back today with the second and final part of what I genuinely hope to be a comprehensive guide to the economy system in Don't Starve Hamlet. Part 1 was all about the many pig shops available in the DLC, what the best deals are, and what wares to avoid at any cost. If you haven't watched yet, link is in the card in the top right. Now would be a good time to mention that in my discussion of healing options, I completely missed what is probably the cheapest healing option from these pig shops. And that is in the grocer. You can buy pomegranate for one oink and cook it up for 20 healing. That makes it cheaper than any other option I mentioned, even hard shell tacos because it doesn't need any other ingredients. Eggplant costs two oinks and cooking it heals just as well. So thank you kind commenter. Okay, so today is the real fun part. I am going to walk you through literally every single way you can make oinks in Hamlet. There are quite a few methods, and some are more efficient than others. Some might be more renewable, and some might be more accessible. At the end of the video, I will give my personal tier list of all the methods based on these factors. And we will also hear from somebody else whose opinion is rather important on Hamlet-related matters. So to start, let's talk about the pig traders. There are 14 types of pigs which will accept certain items in exchange for oinks. I did not include Queen Malfalfa here because she can't produce oinks for you, at least not directly. Most of these traders will only accept trades once per day, but there are a few who will accept an unlimited amount of trades, and these pigs can turn you baller in a very short amount of time. The Banker Pig works at the Mineral Exchange and the General Store, also spawns from townhouses, and will accept gems in exchange for 10-piece oinks. When the Endswell was introduced during Early Access, I did a guide on how you can very quickly get rich off this guy by farming purple gems and trading for an obscene profit. Unfortunately, that has since been patched out and this gentleman no longer accepts purple gems. I am thankful that they didn't just nerf the Endswell because it is for sure a better way of farming purple gems than a Varg farm. Fight me, Gabriel! Anyway, this guy has no daily limits, so trade as much as you want. The Beautician Pig works at the Mud Spot and can also be found around town. She will accept a feather once per day in exchange for two oinks. I feel like I generally neglect this lady because it's a low value trade, but I do think her type has potential in larger numbers. Last I checked, Peacocks grow their plumes back one per day, so you could keep them penned up with a few beauty queens for the easy occasional trade, or you could bring doidoys over from Shipwrecked and breed them up for feather harvesting. But for that kind of work, it seems like the reward should be a little better at least on par with the sell value of berries. I don't know that I would do a dedicated space for her, but I would certainly consider filling a cork barrel with spare feathers in the mud spa. The Collector Pig works at the Sty Oddities Emporium and also hangs around the palace town. Not gonna lie, this dude is my personal in-game bromance. Accepting all my trash items like spider glands, venom glands, stingers, mosquito sacks, chitin, lotus flowers, and weaving all that junk into coin. But what really makes this dreamy thrift shop owner special is no trading limit. Unload an entire human season worth of chitin in a single trip. Set up an oddity store next to a pond and go sailing every three days for lotus flowers. I generally base near a pond so hippos will be constantly murdering mosquitoes and I can just sail around and pick them up on occasion. Mr. Sallow Bowler Hat Dude also takes trinkets but I don't recommend trading them because once you get to Reign of Giants, Pig King will give you a much better reward. By the way, I didn't mention this previously but you can buy the trinkets on the wall of the oddity store for one oink each, then trade those to Pig King for 14 gold nuggets and sell back to the mayor for 70 oinks. Just saying, if you're too lazy to go ruins diving. The Erudite Pig works at the Arcane Shop and can also be found in the Palace Town. I love this lady's hair and glasses. She looks like she's had sequential careers as a middle school teacher, a 1950s roller skate drive through burger waitress, and a witch. You can trade her nightmare fuel once per day for 5 oinks. I get nostalgic thinking back to her OP days in the beta where she gave a 10 piece oink and had no trading limit. Regardless, once you get access to the ends well, nightmare fuel becomes very easy to harvest. And this pig can become a great source of oinks, especially if you build a bunch of arcane shops together. The farmer can only be found in the cultivated biomes outside both the towns, and will trade one measly oink once a day for a single twig or grass. These guys became the occasional trade I would do if I was running through the farmland, either on my way to or from town. The fact that they can't be made from townhouses is a huge detriment to their potential, and by himself one oink per day is just not worth your time unless you happen to be passing through. I don't even think it would be worth the time luring six or seven of them back to a pen at your base. The trade is just not nearly valuable enough. The pig florist can be found around town and also mans the floral arrangement shop. She will accept a petal per day in exchange for one oink. As common of a resource as this may be, the trade limit and exchange value unfortunately cancel out any gains. 
for me it's just not time efficient to collect petals and come back to a florist every day to trade. Sure, feel free to bring a petal with you when you check her shop for berry bushes, but I can't recommend the retired hippie flower child as a worthwhile source of oinkage. The hat maker works in the hat shop and also frequents the palace town. She will accept one silk per day in exchange for five oinks. I think she has some potential, but probably not until you could link to a world where spider dens could be acquired. And that is because silk is generally a more difficult resource to collect in Hamlet. If left unattended, eventually your deep forest trees will all get converted to cocoon trees and spawn spider monkeys everywhere. At that point you can go on a killing slash chopping spree, but then there's the matter of repopulating the forest with trees and waiting for those trees to get infested again. This process can take a while, so it's not really feasible to rely on it for a continuous supply of silk. On the other hand, once you bring over rabbit hutches and a spider den, you can set up a fully automatic silk farm which should produce enough silk for your trading needs. So there's plenty of potential here, it would just require a bit of work and as such is not really a great early game source of money. The hunter pig works in the weapon shop and also wanders around the palace town. He will take a single stinger or hound's tooth in exchange for 5 oinks. It should be noted that his exchange rate for stingers is better than the collector pig who only offers 3, although the hunter pig will only trade once per day. Again, one of those traders from whom you could most benefit by linking worlds. If you're linked to Shipwrecked, craft a bee box and grab 2 or 3 elephant cactus. Plant the cactus around your bee box and come back every couple of days to collect the honey and stingers. If you're linked to Reign of Giants, just bring back all the hound's teeth you will collect from hound waves. I appreciate how the hunter pig will trade for 2 items that have a tendency to accumulate in most worlds and bases simply because they either appear in abundance or have limited applications as crafting ingredients. You only need to make so many tooth traps before you are completely protected from hound waves, but the teeth will keep coming, so it's great to have somewhere to unload the surplus. Mayor Truffleston resides in Swinesbury City Hall, and will accept gold nuggets in exchange for 5 oinks without any limit. You will probably not want to trade too much gold with him at first because gold is not as plentiful in Hamlet as other DLCs. The only renewable method is the mineral exchange where gold nuggets can be purchased for 10 oinks. However, and I am told this frequently in the comments, once you get access to Pig King, this guy becomes a powerhouse of wealth. First, you can give the king any regular meat or morsels for a single gold nugget, and monster meat can be converted to eggs via a birdcage and then offered as well. He also gives gold in exchange for trinkets, and if you are returning from a trip to the ruins, you will most likely come loaded with frazzled wires and melty marbles. Grab your nuggets from the king and trade with the mayor for oinks. It's a great way to make money, and is only limited by your capacity to collect meat. Not exactly a rare resource in any Don't Starve world. The minor pig can be found in the cultivated biome outside the towns and will trade once per day for a rock. You know what these guys are good for? Stealing from. Because outside of their houses are usually plenty of minerals on the ground and a couple of boulders to mine. They won't be too thrilled, but they should be thankful to be contributing something significant to your survival, because their trade will not. As far as I can tell, there are four renewable ways of acquiring rocks in Hamlet. Dung balls, dung piles, gnat mounds, and basalt eruptions from Mech Daddy. The only really fast method is the last one and requires assembling the Iron Hulk. Point is, rocks are hardly as available as twigs or grass, so they should probably have a higher trading value? Because these guys can't spawn from townhouses, the only minor pigs you can get in the world are the ones with which the world generates, so they are somewhat limited in application. The Professor Pig can be found in Swinesbury Academy and around town. I shall name him Professor Boriarty. Professor Boyarty will accept lost relics in exchange for 10 piece oinks with no daily limit. These relics can be found all over Hamlet, most notably in ancient pig ruins and deep forest. Sometimes they will be lying on the ground, but usually you will need a ball peen hammer to extract them from tempting idols, eroding totems, or crumbling visages. Early game the Professor Pig is an excellent source of starter oinks, especially since you will be traveling a lot through the ruins to map out the routes from your spawn to the many different islands. Later the relics start to dry up as more ruins get cleared, so it's not the most viable long term source of money. The shopkeep is native to both Swinesbury and the Palace Town, and apparently needs to work double shifts to support her many runts because Miss Watermelon Beehive runs both the Sterling Trough Deli and Grocer. She will give you one oink for a hedge clipping with no cooldown. I'll give it to you straight up. This very basic transaction is probably the most balanced deal you will find in the Hamlet. Over time, if you make the effort to trim hedges when you are in town, the shopkeep will reward you handsomely in return. It's going to work for the pigs in the truest sense, and can potentially be one of the most profitable ventures in our pursuit of wealth. In addition to trimming the many hedges you can expect to find in both towns, you can also use the key to the city to build your own hedges, which will also be in need of occasional trimming. One nighter in exchange 
exchange for three hedges is a very sound investment and makes Niter even more valuable in this DLC. Now, when trimming, you have the option of using shears or a razor. Both have their own benefits. The razor has infinite durability, so it costs zero resources after the initial craft. But shears will give you double the amount of clippings back. If you have the iron ore to spare, I'd recommend the shears because you can very quickly and easily turn two pieces of iron into a 40 oink profit. I am truly amazed how often I return to this method for making oinks. Even in late game, the hedge fund can be a very profitable investment of time and resources. The usher pig, or berry bro as I have affectionately named, is a very kind elder gentle pig who can be found around both towns and can spawn from townhouses. Once per day, Sir Berry Bro will accept a berry, a honey, or sweet crockpot dish in return for four oinks. The wiki mentions how you can buy a berry from the grocer for one oink, then sell to a Berry Bro for a three oink profit. While it's true, I disagree with the conclusion made by the contributor that this somehow makes berry bushes less useful for oink farming. In reality, a handful of berry bros situated next to a berry farm can provide for an extremely powerful source of food and money. If you've watched any of my Hamlet series, you'll know that I love these little toothless men with all my heart, and will make a concerted effort to set up this farm in my base as soon as I possibly can. There are a number of methods for luring berry bros back to your base, and once they are comfortable in their new surroundings, they will reward you daily for keeping their imaginary sweet tooth satiated. Their honey trade is often overlooked because honey is not as accessible as berries in Hamlet. You can convert nectar from snap tooths into honey by throwing them into a honey chest located inside the mantle, but you can also prototype bee boxes in another deep DLC and bring them over to Hamlet. Bee boxes are amazing to have in Hamlet, and this trade just makes them even better. First of all, the bees will continue to work year-round in Hamlet's less than extreme climate. In addition, the bees will never be naturally hostile like they are in spring and monsoon season, so you don't really have to worry about killer bees unless you attack one. The final pig trader is the worker pig, which can be found in both towns and also appear from townhouses. They also spawn when a nearby pig structure is damaged and will walk over to repair the building, which means you can potentially spawn a large number of these pigs at little resource cost. Once per day, Mr. Mutton Chops will give you two oinks for a rope, board, or cutstone. I have not utilized these dudes as much as I could have potentially, because in large numbers they could be decent trading partners. The fastest way to collect grass is to use shears on tall grass, which will produce two cut grass each. If you want to avoid weevils, I'd recommend only doing this during the day. But if you have an array of 20 tall grass that's free of weevil spawners, you could convert a single pair of shears into a stack of grass in about a minute. If you plan on turning this into rope and trading to worker pigs, you can net about 26 oinks per stack of grass. It's still not as fast or profitable compared to the 40 oinks you could expect by using those shears on hedges and trading with a shopkeep. And bear in mind, you will always be in need of rope for crafting. That's it for the pig traders! In addition, there are a number of additional methods for making oinks that do not involve trading, at least not directly. First, there's taxes. Once you build a city hall, any pig that spawns from townhouses you build will occasionally pay you one oink. Seems to happen every three to four days for me. This will, of course, start off as a negligible sum, but if you manage to demolish both hamlet towns and build your own megacity full of townhouses, you can find yourself with a completely passive source of incomes from the pigs that spawn. The only limit to this potential is how many townhouses you are willing to build. I've spoken with Hamlet players who will eventually put up hundreds of townhouses and collect their taxes every few days, and that ends up being the only income source they ever need. So while the method is slow to start, it's certainly nothing to scoff at. Plot picking falls into the same category of going to work for the pigs as trimming hedges. Basically, if a pig in town sees you pick up their leavings, they will rush over and pay you one oink for your trouble. It's great because in addition to collecting money, you can also get manure which can be used for crafting farms and fueling fires. You can kickstart their questionable sanitary practice by dropping petals, clippings, or any food on the ground. As long as it's not meat, it will quickly be converted to plot via express pig digestion. The mechanics of this process is a bit unclear to me, but it seems like plot produced by any pig can be noticed and rewarded for by any town pig. In large groups, there seems to be a small cooldown time before the next plot picking will be rewarded. So if you're trying to pick up multiple pieces of manure, wait five seconds or so between actions to improve your chances of being rewarded for each pick. This is a nice way of converting extra petals or spoiled food into money and manure. Even the incontinent pig florist who normally pays you one oink for a petal will happily eat the petal on the floor and pay you to clean up after her. When you arrive at the palace, you can grab the postcards from the souvenir shop. You can give one of these to a pig back in Swinesbury in exchange for one of six gifts. And one of those possible gifts is an oink. Not really worth it, honestly. I'd save them and trade to the Pig King in Reign of Giants for four gold nuggets each. 
While you are demolishing the hamlet, be sure not to miss out on the many lawn decorations. Since they are now craftable via the city planning tab, they will drop half their crafting recipe upon destruction. Turns out these trees were where our newly homeless population was hoarding its rainy day fund, and every decorative tree hammered will net you five oinks. Similarly, you can hammer the furniture in your house for a return of half the cost of crafting. It is a nominal return, but deserves mention nonetheless. And now let's talk about the absolute fastest way to make money in Hamlet, bank robbery. Extreme cheese warning, this is a very easy method. It requires few resources compared to the benefit and similarly takes little effort on the player's part. I will never use this method in my games because for me it would just ruin the whole economy balance. But no judgment if you want to use it, it's just not for me. Basically, you use a pan flute inside the mineral exchange to put the banker pig to sleep. Then steal everything. This includes 110 oinks. You just take them. You could also use the one man band to lure the banker outside. After you commit grand larceny, just hammer the whole thing down and rebuild. Rinse and repeat. Were I to use this method, I would go the one man band route. It gets more uses than the pan flute and leaves the pig trader outside for you to murder without alerting two royal guards into the shop. Plus, his occasional pig skin drop will help mitigate the cost of rebuilding. Secret bandit camps are a nice occasional source of money and other goodies. They can be found by reading a bandit stash map which drops from the masked pig. The James Bucket patented honeypot death trap works wonders on Mr. Sneaky Zorro. Wall off an oink, then sacrifice another oink inside the love dungeon as lure. Once inside, he'll hump the wall in a desperate attempt to catch them all. Lock yourself inside as well and hold down attack button. Dig up the bandit camp to spawn a chest. Inside the chest will be one of six item combinations, with rewards ranging from 5 to 35 oinks. I will take the time to follow these maps because you can also get nice loot such as gold, tin armor, and sewing kits. Because of the spawning limitations of masked pigs, they're not overpowered in terms of making money, but they are nice finds nonetheless. That's actually it! As far as this season Don't Starve Hamlet player can tell, this is every possible way to acquire oinks in the DLC. Between 14 different varieties of pig traders, taxes, plot picking, structure hammering, and robbing from the banks and bandits, you have quite a few methods at your disposal for accumulating wealth. As promised, I would now like to present to you my take on the best methods for becoming the wealthiest unpig in the constant. And I will present it in the form of a tier list. Sort of goes without saying, but this is purely subjective, and if you disagree with my assessment, I invite you to share your insights in the comments. Here it is! I have based each method's rating on three main factors. First, there's availability. How easy are the trades to acquire? Secondly, renewability. Can the trade method be easily repeated? And lastly, efficiency. Does the method reward enough for the effort made? And is it a good use of your time and resources? A pig trader's cooldown time is figured into this final factor. So the grades are all submitted, and while there are plenty of good methods, to me there are three very clear winners. Collector trades, shopkeep trades, and bank robbery. All three require resources that are widely available in Hamlet, easily renewable, and massively profitable for the time you will spend. Honorable mentions go to the Usher Pig, the Mayor, and Tax Collection. These methods had potential for being S tier, except they require a lot of initial setup. The Ushers need to be relocated to Berry Bushes, the Mayor only thrives with access to the Pig King, and taxes obviously need a lot of townhouses to turn any substantial profit. But that concludes my assessment of the many methods for generating oinkage in Hamlet. But wait! Mine is but one opinion on the matter, and it gives me great pleasure to invite Demon Rebuilt to share his take on making money in Hamlet. For those of you who don't know, Demon has a number of long-running Hamlet gameplay series, and has tons of experience with Don't Starve. He has also inspired and influenced my own gameplay videos in a big way, so it is an honor to have him join me on this guide. <clears throat> G'day guys. Thank you Jazzy. Yeah, so I've been playing Hamlet right through since the initial beta and while I'll never forget the purple gem exploit that made us all very very wealthy until it was unfortunately but probably rightfully patched out, there are still many good ways to make a stack of cash in Hamlet. Without a doubt my favourite strat for the early game is getting my hands on that executive hammer and literally going to town. Hammering that palace city's decorations alone will often net me around 200 oinks, sometimes even more than that. But by the time you get to the mid to late game, I'm usually looking for more immediate sources of oinks. Also by that stage of the game, I've usually turned the second city into a barren wasteland, 
so I tend to look a little bit closer to home. The bank heist is probably my favourite way of getting oinks in the game. It takes a very short amount of time to pull it off and it hardly costs you anything to rebuild a bank. Even the pan flute has 10 uses and when it's about to run out you can use some of the money you stole to buy some mandrakes and make a new one. You even get some free boards from hammering down the banker's desk. So yeah, that one definitely gets the Demon Rebuilt seal of approval. Thank you, sir. Glad to get the point of view from a player who's much less squeamish about using that particular method than me. Fact is, the entire society of these pigs is corrupted beyond reform, so perhaps the key to thriving in their economy is to embrace the corruption and behave in a manner that generates profit at any ethical cost. But that concludes the final installment of my guide to the Hamlet economy. I realize that this was a long watch, and I hope that you have found some useful pebbles amid this mountain of information when figuring out how you can survive and thrive within this corrupted free market. Please subscribe if you like Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together guides and gameplay videos, and thank you so much for watching. See you next time.